Hey guys, Eli here, and on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the best silver bar that you can buy. Now, if it's up to me, I'll definitely go with silver coins versus silver bars, but there's a lot of people that don't have the same taste as I do. Some like coins, and some would rather have bars in their personal stack. But this is not a video about my opinion, but let's go over my opinion on the best silver stack that you can buy. Wait, hold on there. You just said it wasn't your opinion, but going over your opinion? Uh-uh, let's not do that. Let's start now. So if this is your first time on this channel and you'd like to talk about personal finances and mindset, make sure you guys start now by hitting the thumbs up and also hitting the subscribe button and hitting that notification icon so you guys get future notifications of my future videos. And make sure you guys comment down below and let me know what can I do to make your viewing experience better. And if you guys want to truly support the Urban Lifestyle channel, please consider becoming a member and have access to hundreds of videos and give you granted access to two video courses that will show you how I edit my videos step by step and at the same time give you guys an exact blueprint on how I took me and my family from having zero dollars in the bank all the way to having financial freedom. If you guys are interested, make sure you guys check down in the description below. Silver bars represents one of the best way of actually owning silver bullion. Now, from what I know, there are two types of silver bars. There's pressed, and poured. I call it double P. Wait, I got a better name for it. Let's call it PP. Wait, 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 hold on. That, that, that's not good. Double P sounds good. Double P's good. Silver bars are made similar to the same way silver coins and silver rounds are made. They have a blank slab of silver and then it's struck with a large die and a hydraulic press. Now a pressed silver bar is way faster than a poured silver bar. Huh, you think? I'm actually pouring some right now. Ah, my toes! Now, pretty much you guys should know what poured silver bars is. It's really when you melt silver and then you pour it into the shape of a bar. Hey, I mean, you, you, you really should get your toes checked out. Now, it's really important to know when buying silver, no matter what kind of silver it is, some stuff that you should focus on when you're buying the silver is premium, spot price, value, and liquidity of that silver. Spot price is pretty much the wholesale price of the silver before the companies add their premiums to it before they sell it. Now, premiums are very important. That's pretty much the market price that you're gonna pay when you're buying it from a company. So my best advice is always shop for the lowest premium as possible. The closer you can get to spot, the better. Although you may come across some high premium silvers that you like, but I'll just say, let's just keep those to one-time purchases. Now, when you're considering the value of the silver, what you're really looking for is the popularity that that silver contains. How recognizable that silver is to everyone that may want to buy it. Now, when you're looking at liquidity as far as silver, it's pretty much, in a nutshell, how easy can you sell it? Now, enough of the silver bar history. Let's talk about which kind of silver bar are the best to buy. Now, the first silver bar on the list is the Engelhard silver bar. One of the most trusted name in the silver bar market is Engelhard. Investors have been buying Engelhard silver bars for over a century. The last Engelhard silver bar were minted in the 1980s which means there's no new products being introduced, which makes the premium a little bit higher. But with that being the fact, they also carry their value and maintain liquidity. And these bars can be pressed or poured. Now the next silver bar we have is the Johnson Mathe silver bar. Now the Johnson Mathe legacy stretches way back to the 1817s when Northern Johnson opened up his gold assay company in London. Then he formed a partnership with George Mathe in 1851. Production of the vintage poured 100 ounce silver bar ended in the 1980s. Production of the modern JM silver bars actually ended back in 2015 when JM sold its precious metal division. Now, the next bar we have are the Royal Canadian Mint Silver Bars. While RCM is well known for its gold and silver coins, they also produce high quality silver bars and their silver bars come in various sizes. The 10 ounce silver bullion bar from RMC is the most popular. Next up, we have the generic silver bars. While these bars can be made by countless numbers of private mints, the upside to buying them are, you'll typically find them at a lower premium. Besides that, it doesn't typically hold no more value than the spot price of the silver. So if you're looking to stack a whole bunch of weight, that's the best place to start. Then we have the Sunshine Minting Silver Bars. Sunshine Mints provides a wide variety of silver bars, from one ounce all the way up to 100 ounces. I'll take that. They are available in a variety of size and formats. It comes in different shapes and sizes. And a lot of collectors and investors have a fine taste for them. I'm not one of them, but they do. Next, we have the Mason Mints. The Mason Mints are a contemporary bullion company firm making a wide range of silver products, including silver bars. 
the company offers a handsome selection of standard silver bars, as well as art bars, poured bars, in different shapes and sizes. Mason Mints Bar are very popular with investors who want high quality ingots, but for low prices. Although there's so much more bars that people love to buy, like I said before, as for me, I only want to stick with silver coins and possibly rounds and maybe some constitutional silver. And I'm pretty sure that some of you guys may be asking, why is that Eli? And I'm going to tell you. Now, one of the reasons I much rather prefer to buy silver coins versus silver bars, and even silver rounds for that matter, is because of the value that the silver maintains. While silver coins are minted by most of the government around the world, it makes it more recognizable for other people, where when you buy a round or silver bar, when it comes to selling it, of course they'll buy it due to the silver content, but the fact that it's unrecognizable and it doesn't hold that much value, you won't get the best bang for your buck. Now, when I started and I just wanted to build my stack, the first place I went to was silver rounds and silver bars. And the reasoning behind my decision was obvious. I can get more silver buying silver rounds and bars with a little bit less money than it would have took me if I were to buy silver coins in the first place. Silver coins around the times I first started buying was technically as far as the premium was around three to five dollars. And around the same time, the premiums for silver bars and silver rounds were around one dollar to two dollars. Then I took the personal look at my stack and I realized that I don't have that much value to the stack. Well, let's put it this way. During the whole pandemic, if you were to sell any bars or rounds, you'll technically get anywhere between a dollar over spot or a dollar below spot. But when it came to American Silver Eagle, bullion companies, online bullion dealers were offering $3 over spot for any American Silver Eagle. Now, personally, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with bars, but I'm just saying when you're looking at your stack, you got to look at it as a diversity thing. You want to make sure you're well diversified. Hey, you have some rounds. Okay, cool. Hey, you have some bars. That's good. But hey, you have some coins. The way I separate my stack is the coins are the last thing to go. If I'm ever in a bind or I have an emergency, guess what's the first thing to go? The bars, the rounds, and I'm keeping the coins. Unless the emergency goes beyond that, then and may get rid of some coins. So the best thing to do is diversify your own stack. The way I'm doing it is I have about 50% coins. I have another 30% constitutional silver and the rest of the 20%, I put it into rounds and bars. And that's just my personal opinion. I wanna know yours. What are your favorite bars to buy? Or are you into bars or do you like rounds or are you buying coins? Comment down below, let me know. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. If you guys found value in this video, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to take advantage of this channel's membership that offers you thousands of dollars worth of information. But yes, to be honest with you, this video is over, but the conversation doesn't have to be. Make sure you guys join the Urban Wealth Creation Discord and chat with me there. Oh, that's why I work and grind